In this video, we'll discuss the applications of biotechnology or RDNA technology in the field of agriculture. There are many interesting things which scientists have achieved in this field. The first one is definitely talking about BT. Now BT stands for the name of the bacterium that is Bacillus thuringiensis. And the short form is BT. Let us first talk about what exactly this BT works like and then what is that thing that we are or the scientists have used. This bacterium has a gene which we call the BT gene or this gene is also known as cry gene. Now when we talk of cry gene this CRY cry can be written in two forms. If it is written in italics that means we are talking about the gene and if it is written in simple form that means we are talking about the protein. So here it is assumably in italics because I have underlined it. So we are talking of a gene. This gene is known as cry gene because the protein which is synthesized is a crystalline protein. This BT gene undergoes transcription and translation to synthesize cry protein. This cry protein is crystalline protein. Cry protein. Okay, let me not underline it because this underline means in italics and cry simple is the regular simple form which means the protein. This protein is crystalline. It dissolves in alkaline pH. When it dissolves in alkaline pH, this protein turns toxic. In the plant, this crystalline protein causes no harm, no damage. It doesn't dissolve because in plant there is no alkaline pH. What scientists have done is they have isolated this BT gene and introduced this gene in a plant. So now the gene has been introduced here in the plant. In the plant also, same thing, it undergoes transcription and translation and the same process, crystalline, that is crystalline protein is synthesized. These proteins, they accumulate in the plant. In the plant also, there is no alkaline pH, so this protein remains in its crystalline form everywhere in the plant. When a caterpillar, that is the larval stage of the pest, feeds on this plant. Say this cry protein is in the leaf and the caterpillar that is the larva of the pest feeds on this protein. Now this protein gets into the gut of the pest. In the gut of the pest pH is alkaline. So here this toxin or this protein turns toxic. Now how does it work this toxic protein? It binds to the epithelial cells of the gut and creates perforations in those cells. Say this is the elementary canal and say these are the cells. This protein will create holes or perforations in the cells. Through these holes or punctures water enters into the cell, the cell swells and ultimately ruptures. If all these cells get destroyed, the larva gets killed. We know in the metamorphosis of these insects, there are four stages, eggs, then larval stage, then pupal stage and then is the adult stage. If larva gets killed, we do not get the pupa. And if we don't have the pupa, there is no adult, which is the reproductive state. That means we have destroyed the pest in the middle of its life cycle. And using this technique, we have developed many plants. Bt cotton, Bt tobacco, Bt brinjal, Bt soya bean and so on. Bt cotton has been used in India for last so many years. It was introduced in 2002 
in India and since then we are using it very nicely and it is a pest resistant plant. Similarly, we have obtained many other plants using the same Bt gene. So this is how we use the Bt gene to obtain pest resistant plants. Let us take another example in the same field that is in agriculture. To obtain one more type of pest resistant plant, there is a nematode Its name is Meloidigine incognitia. It infects tobacco plants. So the plant which is infected is tobacco. So how do we obtain a nematode resistant tobacco plant? The technique is known as RNA interference. It is written as RNAi which stands for RNA interference. How does this work? In all eukaryotes there is a defense mechanism which works by this RNA interference. In this, that is in all eukaryotes, to defend, there is a double stranded RNA which is produced, which we call the DS RNA. And this DS RNA is going to be used as a defense mechanism. So let us understand the complete process. What scientists have done is, they have isolated the gene which produces protein for the growth of this nematode. So this is the normal process which takes place in the nematode. This is what is happening in the nematode. There is a gene and it produces a protein and this protein helps in growth. That means for the survival of the nematode, this protein is essential. How we have used this gene is, the gene has been isolated and introduced in the plant. So the same gene for this protein has been introduced in tobacco plant. This gene undergoes transcription and translation. Here, it undergoes transcription and it forms a double-stranded RNA, DS RNA, which is the defense mechanism of the eukaryotes. So, in the tobacco plant, using the same nematode gene, a DS RNA has been synthesized. Now, if this nematode feeds on this tobacco plant, so now nematode enters in this tobacco plant. What is the nematode going to do after it enters the tobacco plant? Here in the plant, it would want to grow, replicate, reproduce and for that, it will have its gene undergo transcription and translation to form this protein. So it will synthesize mRNA and then protein. But as soon as this mRNA is formed, this double stranded RNA, which is our defense mechanism or eukaryotes defense mechanism, comes and binds to this mRNA. So this mRNA is formed and our DSDNA comes and binds here. Why does this DSDNA come uh, here and binds? Because it is complementary to the same thing. It is the same gene using which we have isolated this or synthesized this DSRNA. So what exactly has this DSRNA done? It has prevented the mRNA of the nematode to translate into protein or in other words if we say it has silenced the mRNA or it has interfered in the expression of this mRNA. If this mRNA is not translated 
there is no protein which is synthesized here and if there is no protein as we said it is important for the growth of the nematode the nematode will die so to control the nematode scientists have used the nematode gene itself to develop dsrna first in the plant and then when the nematode enters this dsrna acts as a defense mechanism it interferes in the expression of mrna of the nematode so no protein no growth of the nematode and the nematode is going to die so we have obtained a nematode resistant plant and this has been done in tobacco plant because this particular nematode that is meloidegyne incognitia this is a very common pest in case of tobacco plants another application is obtaining hirudin using a plant The plant's name, where we, from which we will get this erudin separated or isolated, is Brassica napus. Erudin is an anticoagulant, and this anticoagulant is found in the saliva of leech. We want to use this erudin. when we want to preserve some blood samples for our uh, testing when we give blood in a pathology lab they keep it for an hour or so and after that they start performing the tests we want that this blood should not coagulate for that duration and this is one option by which we can keep this blood for those 2 3 hours before the tests are performed now how do we obtain this is a protein so what scientists have done they have isolated hirudin producing gene and have introduced that into the plant called brassica napus it is the similar uh, type of plant that is our brassica campestris or mustard now in brassica this gene undergoes same process that is transcription and translation and produces the protein that is hirudin this hirudin accumulates in seeds of this plant so from the seeds when we extract oil that oil has hirudin we isolate that hirudin from the oil and then use it for our purposes that is when we want to uh, save that blood for a little longer period of time without coagulation we can use other things also like heparin which is the natural anticoagulant that we have but getting heparin is uh, an expensive process this is a cheaper method and we are getting this hirudin synthesized by a plant another application is to obtain flavor saver tomatoes when we purchase tomatoes we want the tomatoes to be red and tight because as soon as the fruit becomes little soft this indicates that it is overripe and we would not purchase it so there are two things which we are looking for it should be red the tomato and it should be tight if a farmer lets it let that fruit lets that fruit for example mature on the plant then it can turn red on the plant but by the time these fruits are transported to the market they would come to the stage of overripe uh, condition and then we will not be purchasing it so the shelf life of these tomatoes is going to be very very short and maximum or maybe a major percentage of those uh, tomatoes would go waste mac gregor develop the technique by which the shelf life of these tomatoes can be increased the name of the scientist is mac gregor so these tomatoes are also known as mac gregors tomatoes named after the scientist or flavor saver one now what 
exactly is responsible for ripening of the fruit. On the outer surface of the fruit, the cell wall which is there, it also has pectin. And this pectin gets dissolved or digested with the help of an enzyme. So there is an enzyme which digests or dissolves this pectin. And as pectin dissolves or gets digested, the outer surface starts to become wrinkled or loose. Enzyme means a protein. So what McGregor did was isolating this enzyme and then using it to delay the process of ripening. The name of the enzyme is PG. The full form is poly galactulonase. This enzyme is required or performs this dissolution of pectin. So what McGregor Mac did, he took this PG gene, that is the enzyme producing gene, obtained mRNA from it and then using reverse transcriptase created a cDNA that is complementary DNA. So this DNA was complementary to this mRNA. This was created in the lab artificially using the same gene and this complementary DNA was introduced into the tomato plants. So now in the plant was this gene not exactly the complete gene only the complementary DNA. It was in the plant. Now in the plant when the normal process takes place what is the normal process in the plant? This gene which is there in the plant would make mRNA and then the protein that is the enzyme and as this is the gene and when this enzyme is produced it will start dissolving this pectin but as soon as this mRNA is formed this cDNA which is there in the plant which is complementary to this mRNA comes and binds with this mRNA that means the mRNA which was supposed to undergo translation to produce this enzyme gets blocked by cDNA and that cDNA is complementary to it so it will come and bind with this mRNA. So this is our mRNA and attached to it is cDNA. Here we have silenced the mRNA with the help of a complementary DNA. If you remember in case of myeloidigyne incognitia that is the nematode which infects tobacco uh, plant we silence mRNA with the help of dsRNA, double standard RNA. Here, the mRNA is silenced by using a complementary DNA. So here also, to prolong the ripening process of the fruit, we have used the gene of the plant and stopped the process of that enzyme production. So this, these flavor saver tomatoes have a longer shelf life. They would remain red, but the membrane will not become soft as the enzyme which dissolves pectin has been blocked or its production has been blocked. Another interesting application is golden rice. Golden rice. Now we know that people in spite of having normal food that is all normal meals still suffer from certain deficiencies deficiency of vitamin a is becoming very common these days golden rice has been created uh, by using this rdna technology to take care of the same problem a beta carotene synthesizing gene has been introduced into this rice. This beta carotene which is produced from this gene is yellowish in color and because of that yellowish color the rice appears little yellow instead of white. 
it is not golden it is yellowish but the term given is golden and this beta in this rice beta carotene would be synthesized beta carotene is the precursor or raw material for vitamin a so because vitamin a deficiency is becoming common these days what scientists have done is they have added a gene beta carotene gene in the rice rice is one of the staple foods and in rice beta carotene accumulates so when we eat this rice we are, rice we are getting beta carotene which gets converted into vitamin a golden term is given because of the color it is not exactly golden it is having a little yellowish tinge so these are some important uh, applications of our dna technology in the field of